Sequels and film have a hard time matching or surpassing the original productions. Being as memorable or landing a similar impact is even harder. In 1996, Danny Boyle's Train Spotting found smashing success in the UK and pop culture at large. It was a near perfect balance of grim consequences and comedic relief to represent the highs and lows of the characters and their fractured friendships. Two decades on from its release, few were expecting a follow up. While Irvine Welsh did publish a sequel with Porno in 2002, it took a while to get the sequel off the ground, with discussions stretching back to 2013. With the actors having aged and ideas given time to mature, what we eventually got was something quite different from the source material. That's what makes Trainspotting 2 stand apart from other sequels. It makes full use of the 20 year gap from the original to form the central crux of its story. The filmmakers said they wanted to make a film that added to the Trainspotting legacy and didn't take away from it. Picking up the story of Mark Renton, Spud, Simon and Francis Begbie decades on from the first film, these jumbled drifters return to their old stomping ground in Scotland and embark on various con jobs to get by, all the while struggling to make their way through countless midlife crises. In short, things are certainly not looking up for the once closely knit lads. Renton's idyllic life in the Netherlands has collapsed, Spud is on the verge of suicide after relapsing into drug addiction, Sick Boy is still ripping people off at every turn, and worst of all, Begbie has escaped from prison, vowing to exact his revenge on Mark for stealing the £16,000 in the first film's conclusion. For all the film's darkly comedic moments, there's an underlying tone of depression and hopelessness that envelopes the proceedings. This is a film about growing older, the endless regret of bad life choices, and somehow coming to terms with yourself. For those who watched the original film 20 years prior, this resonated massively. The scene where Renton, Sick Boy and Spud catch a train out to a familiar patch of the great outdoors is particularly revealing, as the characters confront each other over the choices that led them to where they are today. What other moments will you be revisiting? Here's a good one. How about the time you sold Tommy his very first hit? Leading him on to heroin addiction, HIV infection and ultimately his death at the age of what was it, 22, 23? 23. 23. How innocent was that? Aye, oh, that's mine. How's yours? I don't know what you're talking about. She'd be a woman by now. Maybe kids of her own. But she never got that far, did she? Never got to lead her life. Because her father, someone who should have been looking after her, protecting his own infant, was too busy filling his own veins with heroin to check that she was breathing properly. Aye, how'd you keep a lid on that one? From here, Trainspotting 2 puts a new spin on older events without coming off as a total rehash, mirroring many of the first film's events. The way history repeats itself speaks to the cycle of frustration and depravity the characters find themselves in. Take Chew's life for example. In the original film, it was used to open and close the narrative with a rush of energy, getting across the ups and downs of the heroin fueled drug binge. But when Renton relays the iconic speech to Veronica in T2, the tone is dramatically different. Unfulfilled promise and wishing you'd done it all differently. Choose never learning from your own mistakes. Choose watching history repeat itself. Choose the slow reconciliation towards what you can get rather than what you always hoped for. Settle for less and keep a brave face on it. Choose disappointment and choose losing the ones you loved. And as they fall from view, a piece of you dies with them until so you can see that one day in the future, piece by piece, they will all be gone and there'll be nothing left of you to call alive or dead. Choose your future, Veronica. Choose life. We see a man drained of his youthful energy, his voice breaking as he laments times long past and his disdain for the modern world. Ironically, the more things change, the more they stay the same, and the 2017 film mixes these elements into the narrative without losing sight of its thematic undertones. In addition to these moments, the film continues the same electrifying cinematography and dynamic music that made the first film so memorable, especially in the frantic No More Catholic sequence. These aesthetic elements ensure that T2's identity remains grounded and closely intertwined. The soundtrack, featuring several songs from the original film, are often altered or remixed to serve the modern setting, beginning with the opening which uses the same beat as Iggy Pop's Lust for Life, with a techno spin put on it by the Prodigy to match the modern gym setting. Later, the song Dreaming by Blondie charts the various escapades of the characters in a montage.
yet Spud is the only one getting productive, while also hinting at his later ventures into memoir writing. Much like the first film, audiences hold the most sympathy for him, and the same charisma that made the characters resonate carries through into the sequel. As Ewan Bremner puts it in this Film 4 interview, You don't get through 20 years without picking up some wounds along the way. In 20 years there's a lot to a person and it's not a picnic, you know, there's, there's great stuff that we've, you know, that brings you joy, but there's, there's also things that you struggle with to, to overcome. And As the film reaches its final act, we can hear the Underworld song Slow Slippy, but it's very faint, placed in the background and barely audible. This represents the aging characters fading away from the lives they had before, not to mention preluding the brutal fight between Begbie and Renton that marks the film's climax. Much like Danny Boyle's other films, music is used to enhance the tone, and here it's fully in tune with the characters' often bleak outlooks. Yet, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and as Renton finally reconciles with his dad to close the film, the original Iggy Pop classic comes streaming back in. Much like he did in the original flick, Renton has chosen life. While Train Spotting 2 might not be as energized or entertaining as its predecessor, it stands out as a rare sequel that uses the real world passage of time to fuel its themes and narrative, resulting in a worthy follow up to one of the best UK films ever made. Thanks for watching. T2 was a pleasant surprise for me in many ways when I saw it two years ago, but what did you guys think of the long awaited sequel? Let me know in the comments below. You can follow my blog and channel at the links in the description.